Okay, if there's any compensation at all for going last, it would be that you've sorted out all the technology bugs by now. <laughs> so I hope that's true. Um, I'm going to do the presentation. I'm Ken Greenberg. I'm here with my colleagues Bruce Guabara from KPMB and Yella Terry from Rotterdam, also an honorary citizen of Toronto. He actually lives right next to the site and tells me he has a SIN card by now from having worked on the waterfront. Um, we are, I want to express um, our gratitude, first of all, to Waterfront Toronto and to the city for creating this remarkable opportunity for all of us, the teams who preceded us and ourselves, to reflect on this incredible opportunity to create perhaps the most public and democratic of spaces in our city. We're a city, as you all know, where 50% of us, or more than 50% of us, come from somewhere else. And one of the great introductions to Canada and our city has always been getting on the ferry and going to the island. And if you see the people who head down there every summer, it really is an incredible cross-section of everyone. So this is really all about becoming. And, and just to illustrate the point, if you think back to 1971, when Harbor Square was built, 55 Harbor Square, uh, first of all, there was no square. Um, it was a condominium. It was an introverted island in an industrial area. 200 acres of railway yards were to the north of it. There was really no expectation or no certainty on anyone's part that that would change. Um, and it was designed to be contained within itself. There really was no park and the access to the ferry was, as was described before, truly functional. Fast forward to 2006 and Waterfront Toronto is now on the scene and the big ambition came in another competition. With, this was for the Central Waterfront Plan. This is what West 8, Yella's firm, uh, won that, that competition. And here the idea was to make the entire Central Waterfront truly public. And two big moves were one that's under construction today and will be finished this summer, which we're all looking forward to, it was the transformation of Queen's Key, and another was the continuity of public access along the entire water's edge. So then you look to 2015 and what has been happening through the work of Waterfront Toronto primarily, but others, is on both sides, the east and the west, the pressure has been building. So if you start on the west side, you have the wonderful music garden, you have HTO, you have the transformation of Harbourfront with Canada Square and Ontario Square. Uh, you have, of course, the transformation of Queen's Key underway. If you look to the east, you have the East Bayfront, you have Sugar Beach, you have Sherburne Common, you have all of these great spaces. And what this is leading to is a kind of pressure on this extraordinary point where Young Street comes down and hits the harbor as if we had been waiting all this time to finally devote our attention to what is the keystone that will tie everything together. And this has really led us to, I think, the theme of our scheme, which is one of fusion. The compression of all the elements, the complexities of all the comings and goings and logistical needs of getting to the ferry, of serving the buildings, all the things that are required have really forced us to think of a fusion of the ferry terminal and of the park into one place that we're calling Harbor Landing, which hopefully is an expression of a new kind of common ground in our city for the 21st century. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Bruce. This is our uh, site plan, and I, I just have to say that uh, one of the remarkable things of uh, working on a competition like this is that you get to collaborate with people who are your peers, and uh, some of them, like Ken, are your masters because they have such a big overview about what the city has been and what it can become. Uh, for us, and I'm going to talk about the ferry terminal first, 
But before that, I would just say uh, we, we had a great mayor, David Crombie, who once told me, uh, Bruce, it's about the public realm. And uh, he said that to me a long time ago. And I never forgot that. And so everything that we do is about trying to reinforce that sense of a, what Ken calls the common ground, the shared experience. I think that intersects beautifully with uh, what I think about Jack Layton uh, and everything he stood for. Um, in the waterfront plan, it's about creating an expanded field, an expanded park. We wanted this to feel like a big park, not a little park of little pieces, but a one big park within which the terminal was playing a very significant role, not just as a transportation building, but I would say an architecture that is an agent for our affairs with the lake, not our affairs with the islanders, our affairs with the lake, and our affairs with the island and the horizon. And I think that's very important. And the counter to that is it's a, 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 a space which is, as people have said, it's everything from the porch to, to the place where you'd want to go whether or not you're going on a ferry or not. The image of our building, because I think it very much is about identity on the specific point that Ken has really carefully described, is a sense of a building that also creates a landscape, a building that on the ground plane functions simply accessibly for people who are going onto those ferries and on its roof, like many of the other schemes, we made a very simple, accessible viewing platform where you can really, really see the harbor that it's in commune with the whole inner harbor. We want it to be beautiful. Uh, we want it to be undulating. We want it to suggest landscape where there is none. We want it to be the visual base, not only to Harbor Castle and the Westin Hotel, which are all angular and concrete, but also a figure that you could see from Porter Airlines or from the water and the islands that you would say, there's Toronto. And it wouldn't be just a, a, a regular building, it would be this ambiguous landscape. And then we kept talking because Ken was pushing us towards this fusion. We didn't start here, we ended up here, but how the park and the building could actually interact, that you can actually go up and onto the roof of it and make that con continuous route if you're not going to the islands and there are lines of people heading into the portal. The, the structure of the plan is so simple. There are just two pearl-like glass volumes that sit underneath the roof. The roof is a timber structure. It's held up and tilted up to the south. It has a portal aperture that allows people to come in freely with all the better ticketing uh, uh, solutions that we know that someone from Amsterdam, and it's great working with Westaid because the Dutch are so pragmatic, they're so thinking about efficiency, and they know ferries like nobody else in the world. And so we have a scheme that I think simply opens up the building uh, to the islands and provides the thing that I think is really important, which is psychological shelter and physical shelter. There's several layers to the plan from the bottom up, aquatic habitat, which is just like what's underneath the wave decks. Then there's a platform with holes cut through so you get light and you can sense what's below the ground. There are the two pearls, what we kept calling the two functional pearls underneath the tilted roof. There is the prefabricated timber structure. There is a green roof and there's an accessible looping path that gets you up. And really there's a vector in the, the scheme that goes from northwest to southeast. Two sections which give the idea we want both compression and expansion. And we want it to look beautiful from the water where you see the underside of the roof, and we want it to be really a surprise and, and a kind of very focused portal to the view of the ferries coming in and going out. But you can see even in this image that you can go up and around the opening, and there's lots of places to sit, and we wanted Jack Layton's memorial to be part of it, not the object, but just part of it. Uh, and I think, I think it's finding the right tone for how to be part of it. I'm not going to go through these in detail, but we thought through very carefully, as others have, about staging, keeping the existing ferry terminal active, 
and working while the new one is being uh, built. And that's what these diagrams are intended to show. And then there's on the far right, step five, there, there is an addition to the south end of the Harbour Castle, which really needs help. The final view really is about creating a new horizon, that the building is really a building, an architecture for ferry transfers and so on, but it's also a landscape and it makes you think about the water. So if we now make that 180 degrees turn and we're standing under the canopy of the, the ferry terminal, and you look back to the park, what are you seeing and how does that feel? How are you back connected to that landscape that is surrounding you? And how can we make that terminal building and that park one? That's the conversation I wanna have with you tonight. This is a zoom in in uh, our master plan that shows the connection between the park and the, and the ferry terminal itself. What we're trying to do is basically one big gesture. We wanna make one park that is doing everything. It has one quality and we're going to detail that quality out to the perfection. Similar to the, the, the ferry terminal, we build up our landscape out of different layers. I will walk through those different layers with you and they go from how do we connect this landscape back to the surrounding and the neighborhood to what is the quality that we will find inside the park itself. The park is nestled in between the, 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 the plain of sky and lake and if you're sitting on the boat and you're, everybody, when, when, when you enter the boat and you go to the island, everybody runs to the front side because you want to see the islands and suddenly everybody thinks, hey, crap, I forgot the skyline of, of, the, water, of the waterfront. So everybody runs back to the back side of, of, the, of the boat and then makes that one picture, look, I was at the waterfront. But what we're showing is basically, and that's what we're trying to capture in our master plan of the waterfront Toronto as well, is in the waterfront Toronto is missing green. How can we make this green? The, water, the master plan of the central waterfront is building on creating a green foot for the whole waterfront. That's what we want here at the park as well. We want this beautifully, beautifully green-shaped park that has a place within um, the concept. It's not only a place that needs to be green and beautiful for landscape architects, but it's basically a park that needs to be used by you. You, the people of Toronto, but also the visitors. People that come from abroad, like me, who suddenly come back at the water at, in Toronto and suddenly don't know anymore where you are and you need to re-establish your, your roots within uh, the city and you're trying to find out the place for you and you're trying to find your activities, you're renewing your activities within the park and basically what we're saying is that this park is for you and you need to be able to do every activity you want to do in this public space. It's not only a park, but it also needs to be a place where you can find activities and activities need to find place without interrupting the park itself. So it needs to be able to do more than just being a park, being an activity space. It needs to be more than just an, a place for ecology, for art. It needs to be integrated into one thing, one, one element. Besides building a park for you, we need to think about the seasonality of the park itself. This is a winter image made a couple of weeks ago uh, in, an e in an evening shot. It's the beautifully sun, the sun is setting down into the lake. You capture that image that says, this is the quality of that place itself. It is that hill, the simplicity of what is there already and how can you emphasize that and how can you make that into a life that is there for every season. When I go to the waterfront, like for example yesterday evening when I went to the park, everybody is there at the water edge itself, makes the picture of the, of, the, of the islands again. The beauty of that is that you can basically make that one picture, but wouldn't it be more beautiful that we help you making this one picture by framing views, by creating topography and saying, look, this is one nice shot, but there's another nice shot that you can make on the other side. Please have a look at it and please enjoy that landscape. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to select the view so that you can understand what the beauty of that inner harbor is about. But of course, we're human, so we're doing whatever we want to, but we're also making that one shot for ourselves. The park has been lay layered up with program. The program is not overtaking the park itself, it creates flexibility and it creates this place where everything can find place in even an evening uh, activity or, or, or a presentation of the TIFF. 
The transformation of the park itself finds place through topo topography by creating this inundating landscape, basically two simple hills that create this shape, this oval, this feeling that you say, this is the park. Um, and it captures spaces, it makes spaces, but it also makes intimacy, it, it creates intimacy for you to be there, it makes it human. Um, but it also allows you to do whatever you're feeling at that moment to enjoy that space. So throughout the whole area, we want to create these different views. It's like when you're in a theater, different sets are lowered down to create this atmosphere. And the whole park is built on topography and how you feel um, and how do you behave through that park. How do you walk through that park and every time discover a new view line inside the park, but also towards the harbor front. So we create now the sculpt, the, the, the landscape is sculptured at this moment, and now we want to connect it to the landscape by building onto our water edge promenade, um, connecting it to the neighborhood, and creating this landscape that we've already built at Chorus Building, at uh, um, um, the George Brown College, or at, Par at Por uh, Portland Slip, the simplified water edge promenade, you just continue and you roll that, r that red carpet out to the ferry terminal from Bay Street, from York Street, from... Um, uh, Young Street itself. And then we allow you to discover this landscape by a path system that runs over the inundating hills or indulating hills um, that makes the path access or the park accessible, makes that you can go onto the roof, that you have this almost romantic feeling of walking through the park, being welcomed through the park to enjoy it and discover it. Queen's Key is well on its way, as everybody knows. Um, but what about the next phase? Can we think about the next phase and how do we bring the people to this park? Not only by their car, but we also want to get them there by public transport. We're thinking that there should be an east-west line, trans an east-west transit line, traveling from Parliament all the way to Exhibition Street, with a hub at Bay Street. Um, the hub is basically a translation from I'm traveling at surface, basically everything happens at uh, street level, and then when I go to Union Station, I go below grade, take the people mover or, or tapis roulant, and I go to Union Station. The servicing of this park is very simple. The access to the terminal finds place on the east side. The park itself is publicly accessible for pedestrians, for bikers, but also for maintenance uh, cars that can just drive across uh, the promenade. We're one of the only schemes that keep the, pr the tunnel in place, and, and there's a very there's a strategy behind that. We're dealing with public money. This is a private tunnel, and we want we one of our strategies was to keep that tunnel in place, but then added a public parking to it that can can handle the um, the the servicing for the people who are living in the condominiums on the north side, but also help the drop-off zone for the people who live on the island, the drop-off of the, the school kids who need to go to the island. And then this tunnel and this parking garage could be just one layer. If we want to go one step farther, we find a commercial partner who's joining us and build a public accessible, but a commercial parking lot below grade, which brings and draws the people into the park. This is an image of Bay Street. We simplify the image, we simplify the entrance by just reducing the entrance to the existing parking lot or the existing tunnel. Um, it doesn't our plan doesn't hang on that design. We can, also, we can also live with the idea that the existing tunnel needs to be the same because we're sure that the, that the, the statement we're doing, bringing the Water Edge Promenade to Bay Street, is strong enough to bring people and catch people at bay and draw them to the waterfront itself. So everything is set and now you need to color it in, seasonality, but also bringing the, the ideas of the, water, of the islands back to um, uh, the park. Basically, we're talking about simplified of trees, grass, and flowers. And how can that create a season, an all-year seasonal uh, effect by just having these beautiful patterns of uh, flowers and um, 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 different colors of trees, different colors of flowers, and this biodiversity that can live in it. Uh, not only in, in image, but also in reality, is in how, does, how do these trees change in seasonality, how do they bring color to you, and how do they bring that bio biodiversity to the landscape itself. So, if you zoom back out, and we started with the programming of the harbor landing, is in there's four magnets along this waterfront. And, um, I'm just going to skip really, qu thick, uh, uh, really quickly through them, but we're talking about the Sunday Folly Park, which could be transformed into a public, uh, park, uh, public 
playground for young and older children. Um, the harbor slip, who's basically framed in with the water edge promenade, who transforms into a water park and in the, in the winter can change into a skating ring. Um, a lot of biodiversity goes into the, or aquatic habitat goes into the lake, um, similar to what we did at uh, the Simcoe Wave Decks, where you know, finally can see the ju carpers jumping out of the water into uh, the summer season. And we've got one pavilion um, in the heart of the park, which is basically has a pavilion where it big terrace so that everybody can enjoy that space, enjoy the park, enjoy the water edge promenade, and just enjoy being there. Um, and I think looking at the time, this is the image that I want to stop on, is in, um, we're also thinking about the celebration of the Harborfront Center, but basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to unify everything into one simple concept, a very simple park, really well de designed with one simple quality. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs>